Spirit. We're going to start talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And so let's go on over to the um, book of First Corinthians, chapter 12. And let's begin reading. And we'll start here. It says, Now concerning spiritual, or as we've said before in this teaching, uh, the Greek word there is spirituals, or, you know, and I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Greek word. Neutomatic, anyway, start talking in tongues already. Um, but the Greek word there, it means, it's plural. So it's spirituals. Gifts is italicized, not in the original Greek. So um, it literally means things of and pertaining to the spirit. Spiritual, spirituals. So now concerning things and of pertaining to the spirit, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Um, you know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, you understand, out of a, out of a, mind, out of a, out of a carnal mind, you can say certain things. He's talking about some, no, he, he said here, no man speaking by the Spirit of God can say that Jesus is accursed. You, know, you can't prophesy, Jesus is not God, thus saith the Lord, Jesus is not God. You, if you're speaking by the Holy Ghost, you can't say that. Okay? Now you can be speaking out of the flesh and say it, but you're not speaking out of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Notice the purpose of the manifestation of the Spirit is to profit with all. Amen? The purpose of the manifestation of the Spirit is to profit everyone. It is not so you can build whatever, you know, build your own kingdom, build your own you know, following, build your own whatever. The purpose of the manifestation of the Spirit is to profit people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith, or the Amplified Bible here says special faith. Because we understand this is not the same faith we're talking about when you get, you know, God's dealt to every man the measure of faith. Well, then he wouldn't have to come back here and say to one is given by the Spirit uh, faith. Now, this is special faith. This is another, this is a different manifestation of it. It is faith in the way it functions, but it's special faith. It's faith that operates in, in a place where, um, well, like one person said, you know, when you're raised in the dead, you need special faith. You have no basis to believe that you're going to be able to really raise him from the dead. It takes a faith that comes out of heaven to believe that at that point in time. Okay? To another, the gifts of healing. Now, if you look further down in this chapter, um, it talks about the gift of healings, gifts of healings. And so, uh, we, we always like to make this plural. Healings are, are, there are multiple gifts of healings. Okay? Somebody's got a, has a particular gift of healing. We'll get into this when we get into the power gifts. Doesn't necessarily, uh, like, uh, you have some ministers, Branham, back in the healing revival, uh, could get uh, blind and deaf people, um, blind, deaf, and dumb people healed instantly. Anywhere. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, just line them up and get them healed. Um, Dad Hagen had a propensity along the lines of, of growths in his ministry. So, um, you know, but that was a gift. That was a gift. Um, so just kind of mark that down. We'll get to that when we get to those particular things. Um, by the same Spirit. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of or actually, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues. And really that's not, divers is not in the Greek, so it's really kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as who wills. He will, as the, as the spirit wills. Okay? So, whereas the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So we'll stop there. We have here a list within this, this writing about spirituals and different things. And, uh, and actually when he gets down to the end of the chapter, he begins to talk about uh, ministry gifts. So this chapter is not limited to, you know, spiritual gifts or spiritual manifestations. But this particular this first part is what we're going to get into. We're going to get into what we refer to, we refer to as the gifts of the Spirit, or we could call them the manifestations of the Spirit. Okay? 
we have nine things lifted here, lifted, listed here, and they are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, um, faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Okay, and so we ha have these different manifestations listed, but we've categorized them now. Um, in the past, you know, different ministers have done this and, and, and teaching on it simply for a reference sake to help us understand how they function. You know, not, not because you, this is hardcore, you got to say, well, that's what it is. This is just for, this really more for reference sake and for us to understand um, what they're doing and what they're referencing. So well, they, they've been, we've divided these up in, 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 um, in other ministries. I'm not something new to me. But into categories, three categories, that is the revelation gifts, the vocal gifts, and the power gifts. Now, if you're looking in here, it wouldn't take long to figure out what the power gifts are. All right? Working of miracles, uh, amen, gifts, the gift of faith, and uh, gifts of healings, because they do something. The power gifts, because they do something. All right? Then we have the vocal gifts, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. What? Because they say something. And then we have the revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits because they reveal something. It's, real, it's not very hard to figure that out, all right? So, um, and that, that is the purpose behind this is really to categorize them. So we have the, the revelation gifts, the power gifts, and the vocal gifts. Now, since we've already been teaching on uh, tongues and um, being filled with the Holy Spirit and being, speaking in tongues, we're going to say vocal gifts for um, <coughs> later in this teaching. We're just going to we're going to jump in on the revelation gifts tonight. Okay? We're going to start talking about the revelation gift, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. So um, we're going to define these things for you. And, um, you know, the word of wisdom. God is given to, uh, to um, by one spirit, is given the word of wisdom. Now, uh, this is not wisdom. This is not that, you know, you have the gift of wisdom like God gave um, to, you know, David's son when he asked, you know, you know Solomon wanted to know, you know, God asked what he wanted. He said he'll take wisdom and he became the wise. This is not, this is not just wisdom. Okay. You know, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who upbraideth not and giveth all men liberally. So we can get wisdom. This is the gift of wisdom. And we define it this way, a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the future. It deals with things in the future. And it, it's, it's a word of wisdom. It is not all wisdom. It's not all understanding. Because God shows you something about the future, you don't get everything. You don't know what time this is going to happen and what date that's going to happen. That's not what it's talking about. There, there's just, it's a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God um, concerning the future. And so um, let's look here in John 21, 18, where Jesus operates in the word of wisdom and tells, uh, <laughs> tells uh, Peter something he probably doesn't want to hear. <laughs> All right, John 21. This is after, you know, this is after the whole conversation we talked about Sunday. You know, if, you know, what about him? Well, if you love me, you do what I tell you to do, feed my sheep. Remember that conversation that Peter had with Jesus while John laid on his chest? You know, and we, everybody tries to make this big, you know, out of it, you know. And, uh, but really, you know, this is what Jesus says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, when you were young, you gird yourself and walk with where you would. But when you are old, thou shalt be stretched forth thy hands, and another shall gird you, and carry thou where thou wouldest not. Now, he's revealing something about the future. Tell Peter he's, he's going to die, crucified. All right? You're going to stretch forth your hands. And Peter, church history tells us that Peter was crucified upside down because he said he wasn't worthy to be crucified like his Lord was. And so he has to be crucified upside down. All right? And so we have here, we have a supernatural revelation given concerning the future. Not, not everything. Jesus didn't tell him, you know, all the things are going to happen between now and that time. He just told him one thing. All right? So a word of wisdom was given. You know, when, when a word of wisdom, when, you know, if you're, you're somewhere in the spirit of God's manifestation and uh, someone ministers to you and says, you know, the Lord showed me this. Now, I, I do ask you, you know, just be wise. It's never wrong to bring to, to your, your spiritual authority and ask them to judge it yeah. and see if they're flaky or not. It's always good, you know. Well, if it's God, they got to do what God tells them to do. 
the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. We, we walk in submission and authority. The Holy Ghost operates that way. Jesus said, I only do those things which I see my Father do. And the, Jesus said when the Holy Ghost came, he would not speak of himself. He would only speak of him. You've got to understand that's how God operates his kingdom. Amen. And so uh, these these people who come along and say you just have to, you, we can't be constrained. No, th th listen. There's a lot about a lot in the Bible talks about being constrained and being submitted and, and not running off and doing your thing. Why? Because a lot of people get something and think it's God and it's not. They they get a, they get a goosebump. Not oh the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it was cold. It had nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. It just got got a chill. You know, ooh, that's that. I mean, you know, like it's like uh, the um, one of my roommates when before we went to Tulsa, we were we, we went, listen, when I got first aid, I got I got hooked up with some some anyway. And I was young and dumb. I got Raymond straightened me out. Thank God, <laughs> he got me straightened out. Getting in a good church when I got out of Raymond got me kept me straightened out. But uh, we were we were meeting one th that time. I, I, we bring our girlfriends. We'd all get together and we'd uh, we'd pray. And and one of them went one night the candle burned down one side. Funny. Oh, God's trying to show us something. And made a big spiritual thing out of it. <laughs> anyway, well, two of, two of the guys that were in that thing had come out of homosexuality. Okay? So one of the girlfriends went to the pastor at our church and told them we were having homosexual seances. Now, I don't know how you got the candle burning down one side all the way over to that other thing. I don't know how you got there, but, you know, she didn't like her because her boyfriend was going, whom she later married and then divorced. Anyway, um, he's the one you should tell his wife to uh, uh, tell her when they woke up and want to put your face on. <laughs> you could put a makeup on. How dumb can you be? I mean, that, that dumb on steroids don't even cover that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, wonder, wonder why they're divorced. I don't know. But, you know, make it a, make it a big deal. See, spiritual immaturity will make something out of something that's not something. Did y'all get that? Yeah. Did that leave you behind? It'll make a big to do out of something that has no spiritual significance or spiritual bearing or anything. Simply because, you know, they're, they're young, inexperienced, and they, and they got a, they got a whimsical, whatever. That's why it's important. And, and one, let me say this. Our little meeting that we were having, we were all getting together and praying and all this stuff. We, listen, can't be, we'd be a homosexual sense. My girlfriend was with, Jane was with me. We were dating. She was there. And well, nothing else going on. And, you know, okay. And, um, and, but we weren't under the pastor's authority. The church wasn't overseeing that. Okay, so um, that's just a word to the wise, and it's always a word to the wise. Somebody's got a word for you, so fine, I, you know, I'll, be, I'll be glad to receive it. But, let's, but, you know, if your church is big enough, you've got elders or you've got pastoral staff, you know, people that's been set in authority, go to someone and have them judge it. It's just, it's a safety in that. Safety for everybody. One safety for the person given something that it can be judged. They don't, they don't mislead somebody and they cause somebody to stumble and get into trouble. Or, or do things wrongly. Uh, safety for the person receiving it so that they don't go off and act on something somebody said and get them in trouble because God didn't tell them. How many people I've known, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of anybody that I ever kn knew that was prophesied they were supposed to get married. They got married, they stayed together. Every case I know about, they're divorced. I don't know of a one now, you might know one. I don't know of any that I personally know about where somebody prophesied they're supposed to get married and they got married that they're still together. That's why you need to judge stuff. <laughs> oh, I got to obey God. Well, you got to obey God, but you ain't got to obey Herman. Okay? You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, how do I get off on all that? Okay. Jesus was submitted to the Father. All right? Praise God. Uh, let me look down. I'm looking into Acts chapter 9. I'm trying to find, put, uh, kind of cherry pick out Acts 9. Let's go over to Acts 9. We'll give you another example of a word of, of wisdom. I'm trying to cherry pick out that chapter without having to read the whole chapter. 
because there's a lot there. But, but you know, so God's going to get, God's going to speak to you about your, about a specific thing. Listen, it may not be even prophecy about your future. God may be speaking about the future in the church. May the word of wisdom may come forth as a congregation. Okay? So we just, you know, <coughs> we, have to, we have to balance all these things. Hallelujah. I got another one over here, but thank you. Hallelujah. Let's look here in Acts chapter uh, 9 down. We'll get down to verse 10. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. He said, I, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Ananias, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas of one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision. Now, this is, this is the word of wisdom in vision form. Okay, has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive a sight. So the Lord gave Paul a vision of a word of wisdom. The word of wisdom, the, the vision contained the word of wisdom. There's somebody coming to lay hands on you, you might receive your sight. Yeah. Okay, so this is a manifestation of the word of wisdom, a special revelation about the Spirit of God concerning the future. It hadn't happened yet. Paul's praying, has a vision, sees a guy coming in laying hands on him. Okay? Happened in vision form. It can be, it happen in vision form. It can happen in, in utterance form. You know? So, however it happens, however the, whether the delivery system is, whether it's through a person or through a vision, it's still a word of wisdom. It's still it's a divine revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the future. And so, and then we have one, the, the, the next thing is the word of knowledge, which is very similar. It's just a special revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the past or the present. Okay? All right. So um, we have here really the same thing. We have the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge operating. Go into a street called Straight and look for Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. God told him what was happening right then. Then he gave him a word of wisdom. So he had word of knowledge and word of wisdom. And this happens a lot. A lot of times you'll have both of these manifestations operating together because the only thing that really distinguishes them from each other is either one's dealing with the past or the present, one's dealing with the future. Okay. Peter, really with what Jesus said about Peter, when you were young, you girded yourself. He's talking about it. That's word of knowledge about how you did yourself. In the future, this is going to happen. So a lot of times you'll have these manifestations, and this, you'll find this true about the gifts of the Spirit. They will function oftentimes in conjunction one with the other at the same time. Okay, that's why I'm saying we, we're categorizing them and saying them uh, and, and for, for reference sake, but, um, you know, they, they often operate together. Um, no, you, you'll find a lot of times that, that prophecy, which is an, is an inspired utterance, but it'll function with, revela with tongues of interpretation of tongues. You'll be, you know, you'll be ministering in tongues and prophesying and, and people be interpreting. You can, you can go, I've, I've been in services where someone, um, and, and that's happened in our ministry, uh, where you, a tongue will go out and the interpretation will come and it's right, while you're giving the interpretation, on the tail end of that interpretation, you'll step right out of that interpretation and move into prophecy. Flowing together. You know, it started out with tongues and interpretation of tongues, and, and then, it's, then you step right over into prophecy right at the tail end of that interpretation, and without the tongues and interpretation, it went up to a higher level. So you, you, and then you'll have prophecies that, that will give forth and have word of wisdom and word of knowledge in them. So you understand these gifts operate in conjunction with one another. Most of the time you'll see that happening. They're, they're operating together, all right, and working together. So the word of knowledge, and... Um, we have John 1, 47 through 49, talking about a word of knowledge. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith to him, of him, Behold, in Israel indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knewest thou me? Or knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said, Before th that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. See? Past, and, you know, okay, he's talking about the past. And Nathaniel answered said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. I think Jesus has something to say back about later. Hey, if that impresses you, there's more stuff coming, buddy. That's kind of paraphrased. Okay? And then Matthew 9. Look over Matthew 9. So you see here, Jesus saw him. So this is a word of knowledge. He, he spoke to him and told him what had happened in the past. Before you came over here, before Philip got over there, you were under this tree. Now, let me tell you something. This is one of the easiest manifestations for Satan to mimic. Because he knows, what's he sees what happens. And so, you'll get into services and people start saying, oh, you, you live at such and such street. 
and your house is white, and you drive this kind of car, and da 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 da. Well, it can be the Spirit of God, but I've seen a lot of that be the be the devil. And, and usually, you can find out this way. What happens? What's the end of it? What's the purpose of it? Notice Nathaniel said, you're, the, you're, you're Christ. You're the Son of God. And it calls him to follow after him. But if it starts putting in big offerings, I'm telling you, I've, I've seen people get on television and operate in familiar spirits and calling it the word of knowledge and it's familiar spirits. They're operating in a demonic spirit and ha taking hauls of money out with it. And Jesus is not glorified. Everybody's talking about them. Now, listen, you can't stop people from talking about people. But I've seen these things, and, 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 and they just, you just kind of stand back, and you know it's not the Holy Ghost. If you discern, if you discern with your spirit, I'm not talking about discerning spirits. Your spirit should be able to discern things. The eyes of your understanding being lightened, that you may know. Amen? Spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment not, is not the gift of discernment. There's no such thing as a gift of discernment anyway. Um, but you should have spiritual discernment. But th this is one of the easiest gifts for Satan to mimic and, and mislead people with, the word of knowledge. Okay. Now, it's harder for him to mimic uh, the word of wisdom because you can find out if it don't come to pass. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, it didn't come to pass. Well, there you go. <laughs> Especially when they, get, when they get real specific. Oh, such and such state, this is going to happen. And it doesn't happen. Well, well, duh. So what do we do? Well, number one, is there a purpose in it? If it draws you to that person where they are your voice and it doesn't draw you to Jesus, then it's not God. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. <clears throat> I believe, you know, um, God does do things to give credential or uh, credence to ministries because he's trying to get something to the people so they'll get them to the way they'll believe for something. Okay, he's, he's, and, and the whole purpose is not to get a big offering. It's so that when they try to get, like, like in a healing ministry, you know, Brother Hagin one time had a situation happen, and um, there was somebody brought in on a stretcher, and he, he saw in a vision, see, saw a word, had a word of wisdom in a vision, saw him point his finger and says, rise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and walked, they got up off the stretcher and walked off. He saw it happen. And then when he got to the service, and they rolled that person in, then the Lord spoke to him and said, now you tell them. You tell them that I've called and anointed you with a special anointing to heal the sick. And said, and I'm going to, and, 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 I, and I'm, you're going to point your finger at this person. And he told people, I'm going to point my finger and tell them to rise up, get up and walk in the name of Jesus. And if they don't get up and walk and they're not healed, then I'm a false prophet. Well, they did, they did, and, you know. And, and what, but what ended up happening out of that was, because it gave credence to his ministry, he was able to minister to them more effectively. And it didn't draw them to him. It, it, it opened the door for the Lord to minister through him to the people. Big difference than taking a big cash haul. Now, I believe the Word of God teaches we should take care of the ministers, give them our natural means as they've given their spiritual means. That's biblical. Part. But there are people who do who use things to get, to get ahead. I remember a number of years ago, um, now, see, like I said, when you get into word and wisdom, word and knowledge, you kind of start flowing back and forth, you know. I remember a number of years ago, I was um, um, in our church in Greenville, and uh, a local pastor who was a Pentecostal in this church, but he was pastoring a non-PH church for a season, and they gave him two years to pastor it to decide whether he was going to stay with the denomination, turn it into a Pentecostal hole in this church, or he was going to give it back to somebody else and stay with the denomination. And he was looking for an associate. I didn't know that. And he called me up and asked me if I could come up and preach for four Wednesday nights in a row. And I asked my pastor. He said it was okay. I didn't know he was looking for an associate. He didn't tell me that. He just wanted to have me, I thought he just wanted to have me come preach. That's why I went. So on one of the Wednesday nights, I was praying out ahead of time. And, and I, I'm, I'll never forget, you know, was, you know, one of those things. Uh, now, it was one of your, your typical church I used to. They used to be the sanctuary, and they have a Sunday school wing off of here. And they had the back doors that went outside 
So if you had a wedding, you'd go out, but nobody ever used them. You came in the Sunday school wing and came down the hallway and came in the side door over there. That's how, that's how, that's how they did it, you know. You had, you had the sanctuary, you had the doors, which were really the front doors, according to people coming up to the parking lot. They're really the back of the sanctuary. And then the doors that went into the Sunday school wing, the fellow, you know, all the other stuff. And, and so I, I, I remember, it was about the, I can't remember if it was the second or third week I was there. But the, the, between the Sunday night service of our church and that Wednesday night service, I was praying. And while I was praying, I had a mini vision. And I saw this girl walk in the side door over here, walk over there and sit down on this side of the church. I saw her, I saw me point my finger up here and say, come up here. The Lord said, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Told me if I lay hands on you, you'd be filled with the Spirit. And she got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm sitting there preaching on that Wednesday night. Service has started. Here she comes. It's the girl in the vision. Walks across the back. Sits down, and I stopped the service. I said, I was praying on such and such night, and the Lord showed me, and, and I saw you. I saw you in a vision. I saw you walk across the back of the church and sit down right over there. She said, exactly where I saw in the vision. I said, the Lord says, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? She said, no, I'm not. He said, if you'll come down here, I'll lay hands on you. You'll be filled with the Spirit. She got up, came down, I lay hands on her, and she got filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Just like I saw it. Well, see, I had a word of wisdom in that vision form take place that night. Amen? I mean, it's, and look, I'll tell you, sometimes that'll freak you out. I mean, we're, we're human, you know, and, and <clears throat> I mean, you're thinking, ah, oh, yeah, I just you know, I made that up in my head or whatever, and then you see it. And it's the same girl in, in the vision, it's the same girl that came in and sat down. Amen? Well, thank God. She got filled with the Holy Ghost. She, you know, I'll tell you that, that'll, you could have people wondering if the gift of the Holy Spirit's real. Yeah. I didn't get the question any d deeper than that. I just, we just did what I saw and acted out what I saw. Now, probably today is more mature. I would probably question a little bit more and say, now look, were you questioning? I'd get more information so I would understand why God did what he did. Maybe try to understand why God did what he did. But you know, she could have been kind of coming to church going, I don't know about this Holy Spirit thing or not, you know? Could have been doing that. And then God point out and have to say, well, I saw in a vision, I saw this, boom, boom, boom. And you know, I'll tell you what, that'll wake them up too. Well, what was the end of it? She got filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Got glory to, gave glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody knew God was in, in, in involved in that. Amen. It wasn't Ed. <laughs> I couldn't have made that up. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, when, when the manifestation of the Spirit, they ought to be bringing people to Jesus or opening doors for Jesus to minister to them more effectively because they got questions or there's, there's issues in their life, and He'll use the manifestation of the Spirit, especially these revelation gifts. Man, they, they, I tell you, they can get the people. And they can just get the people. You just stir them up, you know? I mean, you can shake them up, too, you, you know? So, um, anyway. Matthew 9, 4, it says, uh, what does it say there? <laughs> it says, I was going to read a couple of preceding verses to it. Sometimes I just hate to jump right in on the verse I was after, because then we, we leave out some, a little bit of context. This is a story about the, the man sick with the bed, brought, brought and left down through the roof, and, and he says, be a good cheer, the sins are forgiven. And they say, who can forgive sins but God alone, yada, yada. So we get through that whole thing, and um, this is, look, look, look at verse 4 here as we're coming into this. And Jesus knowing their thoughts. That's the word knowledge. He didn't read minds. Do you understand this is not mind reading? This is the Spirit of God telling you something. Now, I've had that happen too. You're standing there talking to somebody and you know exactly what they're thinking. You, you, don't, you, can't, you can't always say it. God will show you stuff about what's going on to protect you. You know, the Word of, the word of Knowledge can operate. See, Word of Wisdom can tell you about the future, but the Word of Knowledge can protect you. You've heard Dad Hagen tell the story about um, how that he, when, he, when he was early in ministry, he wasn't married yet, hadn't met Sister Aretha. And, um, you know, he was, he, he was kind of interested in this girl. And uh, they, they, I think they kind of gone out a little bit or seen, talked a little bit or whatever, you know, they did back in those days. They call it talking now. And I, I don't know what that entails, but I think it entails more than it did back then. Some of you young folks have to help me out there. 
All right? Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> so he was a preacher. He was preaching. He was preaching. Um, preaching in, in his church, in, in service. And he's out there preaching in the pulpit. He said, but he's called away in the spirit. And saw this girl in another town. And walked down the street, go to a certain place. Man came by in a car, stopped the car, opened up, she got in it, went down, pulled off an alley somewhere, and um, committed, uh, had fornication. He was in the back seat in the spirit watching all this. That wasn't, that wasn't the future. It happened right then. He knew what to do with her. He didn't, he didn't go tell her. He didn't say that God showed me. He just dropped her. God was protecting him. Yeah. Amen. God was protecting him. There are times that God will protect you. Amen. God will show you things um, through the word of knowledge for your protection. You're not supposed to go tell anybody. You're not supposed to go write a book about it. You ain't supposed to put a Facebook blog about them on the internet. You're not to tweet about it. It's for you. Okay? So, uh, and, and God does it to protect you. You don't have to have it. And see, and this is where you know, a lot of times a vision form or whatever, you don't, it's, it's not going to be done by somebody else. It's God speaking to you. A uh, good amount of time is for your protection to, to spare you from something because there's bad coming your way if you don't. We can bobblehead now. Yeah. Anybody want bobblehead? Yeah. So they said Jesus knew their thoughts. Amen. And, he, and then he says, wherefore think ye evil in your heart? Now, he did deal with it because it was this was a public thing going on here. You know, why, why you got evil in your hearts? He knew what they were thinking. He knew exactly what they were thinking. Boom, nailed them to the wall. Amen. Kind of like what happened the other day. I, I, can't, I can't say it because we're on television with the Roku box and that, that person we were talking to you about the other day where they, <laughs> you know, I preached one thing and they walked in, you know, three weeks later into the middle of a service on, the, on, on a television and got nailed. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. So Jesus knew the thoughts, word of knowledge and operation. Okay? God will protect you. God will give you, God will share you, show you things for your protection, past and present. So it could be going on something that happened in the past that could be detrimental to you or happen, happening right then that could be detrimental to you. That's not always that. It's, it could be other things. I'm, I'm, I understand that. But have you ever noticed... Um, I call them gimmick preachers. I do. And what you live in such and such street in your house, you live pink and it's got black shutters and you know you got orange carpet, you know, and they're they're naming everything. They're naming everything. I mean with specific <laughs> very specific. I just can't I have a hard time pronouncing that word. My tongue gets tied when I try to pronounce it. It just gets it gets hung up. So very specific. Oh yeah, wow. Now, I've seen ministers do that in a minute to a certain degree. Now you came tonight and uh, you had questions about this, and the, and, and the Lord said, "If you'll believe, you'll you know." But you, you you were sitting back there in the back there, and you were saying such and such. You must be a mind reader. I'm not a mind reader. The Lord showed me. Amen. I've seen that happen. But the purpose <clears throat> was to get them to open up to receive yeah. ministry. It wasn't to give credence to the ministry and take a big haul. Amen. So we, we have to be careful about this. We want, to, we want to be careful not to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Standoffers all the time, but you gotta, you got to recognize something and see well, what's the purpose of this happening. <coughs> and if you get to come every time, they always tell everybody everything about them every time you get together. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you something. I've had that, that vision thing happen like that that I'm really cognitive of right this second. I may have had it happen more. I can't remember right now. I've only had, that I remember right this second one time in my ministry where I saw in advance something happened and it happened exactly like I saw it. Now I'm talking about advance. Now sometimes I'm in a service and I'll see something right as you're in the flow of things. But I'm talking about like that. You hear some people, every time they stand up to do whatever, they're, they're giving out, you know, where people's address are, where you live, to everybody. They're telling them everything, who they're married to, who the boyfriend is. I would guarantee you 98% of that is familiar spirits. Devil's talking to them. And people throw the money, and they throw the money, and they throw the money. And everybody keeps talking about how accurate they are in the spirit. 
my judgment is always, what was the end of what they did? To what purpose and what avail did, because they did that, anyone get healed? Anyone get delivered? And I'm talking about truly get delivered. Did Jesus get magnet? Really, Jesus get magnified? And I'm not talking about people going, "Oh, praise the Lord," because he could read, he knew where I lived. To my, did Jesus get lifted up and draw men to Him, and people's walk with the Lord became deeper? Amen. Those are some of the things you have to use as, as judgments to discern things with. Amen. And if it's not, then you got a question: Is that God or not? We don't want to get caught up in, 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 in squirrely, flaky stuff. And you don't want to, and you don't, you know, and I see, listen, back, you remember, back on one particular television program, they had this guy on there week after week after week after week. He'd just get on television, call people out of the audience and, and do that. You remember that? Yeah. I remember his name. Oh, yes, I do remember his name now. I just remembered his name. I hadn't thought about his name in years. Uh, just, and it was, and you'd watch it. And, and I was a young Christian. Uh, listen, I can't, I, can't, I can't say that I was accurate in everything, but I always remembered how that just bugged me. It just kind of didn't sit right with me. Okay? And I, I think later on something else came out about the person and stuff, about their lifestyle or whatever. But they were, were you ever in any of those meetings? <laughs> yeah. Rod Serling is there. Do -do -do. I never really saw any profitability of it. Now, see, that's, that's the false. But that's what Satan will do. He'll capture people with a false manifestation of the Spirit and then get people to actually turn away from any true manifestation of the Spirit where God is really doing something. I won't say that God won't come in and say, look, you know, you live over in Pleasant Garden and your house is like this. And you go, and then... It opens up something, and God is able to minister to you. And when you walk out, you're not going, oh, he really read my mail. You walk out going, the Lord was able to minister to an area of my life because I opened up and knew that God was here uh, in ministry. And he was able to minister to this specific area. It wasn't that I was hooked up to the person. It opened the door, and now God's ministering to me. You know, with like, just like with Nathaniel. Nathaniel answered and said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. When Jesus said that, it opened up to him being connected to the Lord. We had to make sure people are connected to the Lord. Anytime the Spirit of God's a manifestation, he's going to be taking people not to a man, but to the Lord. Yeah. I understand you can have people walk out and go, oh man, brother so-and-so is awesome. You know, he really ministered to me. And I understand that. And those are immature statements. But if you really judge their life, it drew them closer to the Lord. I, I get, you know, you can't stop people from saying stuff. The real judgment is, is in the fruit of their life that comes out of that. Did it bring them closer to the Lord? Did it really establish them in the things of God? Did God was that God able to minister to them in a way that he would not have otherwise been able to minister to them in had it not been for that, that event or that ministry or manifestation of the Spirit? Okay? So, yeah, I remember it used to be on that, that particular show. That, that, that show is no longer on television, and, you know, it, it, everything kind of fell apart. But I, I just remember it was a time there. Every time you turn on, that guy was there, and he was doing it. was always the same thing. Always, always like every single person would just do the same thing. Now, here's the thing. Ministers, 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 be careful. I've been in ministry for over 30 years. I've been around ministers who were in ministry, who, who were in ministry 60 or 70 years. I've sat in dinner tables with, um, with Lester Summerall's and CM Wards and people like that. Sat with them and listened to them and sat at their feet and listened to them. One of the biggest traps for ministers is they can be in the anointing of the Holy Ghost one minute and they think that they have to have that to get the offerings. When they get out front of the anointing, they want to replicate that. And so they try to make it happen and that's when those other spirits get involved. Because if God, remember, it's given to every man as the Spirit wills. If the Spirit of God's not behind it, you need to leave it alone. But they came out, they came out for that. Listen, I sat and watched Dad Hagen for years. Especially during the time when they were having what we would call Holy Ghost services where people were laughing and running and there was a, there was, there was, the Lord was trying to restore some things to the church in the arena of joy and that kind of thing. We'd have a service at, at Ramah and you'd have a service where people were jumping over the chairs, and, and I mean, you, you just co totally came unglued. 
And the next night, people would try to make that people, not Brother Hagin, the people would try to make that happen again. They try to run, and you, you just sit there and you're going, there's no unction for that. They'd start like, ah! <laughs> and it was annoying. It wasn't. It, it, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't bless you. It didn't, you didn't say, oh, praise God, there's a, there's a spirit of the Holy Spirit here. It was annoying. And I've watched him time after time after time after time. When there was a service like that, I'd say nine times out of ten the next night, he'd come in, they'd try that, he'd just open up his Bible, teach a 45-minute Bible lesson on faith, say, let's go home. He didn't push the buttons and pull the levers. He would not try to make something happen. As a matter of fact, he'd go right back to the Word. Why? Because after that service, all the laughing and all the running's over, if you don't have the Word as a foundation, you're going to get in trouble anyway. Now, a few years ago here in our city, we had some guy came in, and for like six to nine weeks, I forgot how long they were here, they met at this church, and morning, noon, and night, they got together, and everybody laughed. He start, he'd teach about 20 or 30 minutes, and then as soon as people start laughing, they stop teaching, and they just all laugh. I had somebody call me, oh, I'm so drunk I can't even talk to you. <laughs> oh, Pastor, <Ed. laughs> oh, you got to get over in these services. I don't, I don't had my spirit. Now, let me say this. After the meeting was over, I saw that same person a few weeks later, and he was just like he was before the meetings ever happened. All that laughing, every service, and you know, every, every time he could go over there every morning, noon, and night, and give an offerings and laugh, 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 and call on people and get them to come over there. As soon as he left town, pulled up the stakes and left town, he's right back where he was. You don't typically have the same manifestation of the Spirit every single service. Over and 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 over again. I'm talking about manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, like this joy. Now, well, Azusa Street last three years, but see, that was a different thing. They were all coming and getting filled with the Holy Spirit, every service from all over the world, and it wasn't even the same crowd. I mean, that was that was people coming from all over the world getting filled with the Spirit. Amen. It wasn't them having one manifestation, being filled with the Spirit, not a manifestation of the Spirit. It's just like having a three-year revival where people get saved every night. But to have everybody come laugh every service is a manifestation of joy. It's a manifestation of the Spirit and producing joy in people's lives. So we have to watch things, be careful. Which leads us into discerning of spirits. You know, seeing into the Spirit, evil or good, whether it's evil or good, realm, whether by dream or vision. You can, now, we, we're not going to get into visions in great detail. But you have open visions, you have closed visions. And Brother Hagin had many visions. M-I-N-I. -I. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> open, sorry, guys. Open vision is you're sitting here and you see Jesus. I see you and I see Jesus. That's an open vision. In other words, your senses aren't abated, you're, you're, you're cognitive, but you see into the spirit realm and the natural realm at the same time. Just boom, that's the open vision. A closed vision is, is, is usually um, you're, you're into the spirit, okay? You're into the spirit, you're unaware of other things. In other words, you don't see the natural, you see only the spiritual realm. And then there's dreams where you have visions within the dream. Okay, so you have open vision, closed vision, and then dreams, okay? Um, but discerning of spirits, you see into the spirit realm See, I might discern a spirit that, I may, I may discern the spirit there, and God, God may say there's an evil spirit here. That's not discerning of spirits, that's a word of knowledge. There's a spirit of, of um, there's a homosexual spirit in this room tonight. Well, that's not discerning of spirits. I don't, I'm not seeing into the realm. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I'm sorry, word of knowledge is kind of mean God's told me that. I've ministered to people that way. I've gone down the line, and God, the Lord says, you got this. I don't see the spirit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in that realm. I'm not, I'm not into the realm where I'm seeing into the spirit realm. But I know that's there. God, showed, God told me that. Well, that's a word of knowledge. He's told me what's going on right now. Discerning of spirits, I would be seeing into that realm and seeing that spirit. And uh, 
some, you know, you know, just some, or, or as Brother Hagin, actually Brother Hagin said, he, a lot of times when he's in the ministry line, he could smell the homosexual spirit down the line. He, he said he could smell it. It's one of the most, it's the most foul smelling spirit you can imagine. Because the Bible calls it an unclean spirit. And uh, he could, he could, so that was discerning spirit. He was over in the spirit realm with his sense of smell. He could smell it. Wow. Okay. Uh, Acts 10, 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour on the, an angel coming unto him. Remember we talked about over in Acts 10, Ananias and Paul, or Saul. He saw in a vision. So now we have discerning spirits. He's seen over into the spirit realm and saw things happen. Um, Acts 27, you know, where they're on the ship and they're in trouble. And it says, Acts 27, 21, but after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and says, Sirs, you have hearkened unto me. You should have hearkened unto me and not loose from Cray and have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be a good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought unto Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. <laughs> Amen. He saw the angel, and the angel spoke to him. Acts 8, 26, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go south toward the, uh, go, go toward the south on the way that you go down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, uh, which is desert. And so Philip saw an angel. See, an angel is discerning of spirits. See, a lot of people want to tell you, well, you know, they always run around, they, got, they see demons and everybody, they're seeing devils. Seeing angels is just as much discerning of spirits as seeing a demon spirit. Yeah. It's discerning of spirits. It didn't say it's discerning of angels or discerning of demons, it's discerning of spirits. Right. You see into the spirit realm. When you see an angel, you see a demon, you see Jesus, you see another person's human spirit. Dad said one time he had a vision and saw the spirits of men. He said they were emaciated. Christians shriveled up little, like little stick men inside their bodies because they were so spiritually uh, emaciated. That was discerning of spirits. He saw into the realm of the spirit. And so the discerning of spirits is the other revelation because it reveals what's going on in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Now be beware of people who are always seeing something. I had a roommate. Dear Lord, he'd tell you about every day, every, th every day or every other day there was his angel. There's my angel right over there. He's smiling at me. He's leaned up against the bus, smiling at me. He's, sit, he's seeing his angel all the time. I don't see him, you know. And, and, looks, and obviously, if, if the Lord's revealing something, they're operating in discerning experience, and you're not, you're not going to see it. But when they see something every day, when somebody's seeing something all the time, when they're always seeing demons, they're always seeing angels. But that's just about it several days. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've had... A number of these gifts manifest in my life over the years, but some of them only once. Some of these never. And some of them only once because that was the need at the time. It was not for me. It was for the people. I said it wasn't for me. It was for the people. And so it's not about me being able to see angels all the time or me have a word of wisdom or word of knowledge all the time. It's about helping people. It's divided civilly every man to profit with all. To profit with all. And so, you know, God could use you in any of them. Amen. And uh, so just, just be aware of that. So we have the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits can be manifest through open vision, closed vision, or dreams, visions within dreams. Amen. Um, you will see into the spirit realm. You will see evil spirits or, 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 or angelic heavenly spirits. Amen. If you see Jesus... You're the discerning of spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So let's close there. That's 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 the, the revelation. You know, the revelation gifts, you know, that's not that's not something you can go really make happen. You know? We always we always like the you know the power gifts. We we love we love power. We love miracles and healings and you know, gift of faith, raising the dead. We love all that kind of cool stuff. All right, um, but you know, we can't make any of them happen. But you know, the, the revelation gifts are, are, are you'll find out when they're functioning properly in the body, they're ministering to people, they're helping people. So they may be minister to somebody about what's going on in the future. God's showing you something, you got, and it's helping somebody be prepared for something that's coming. Think, think of Jesus um, offsetting Peter in the end when you know he said, Well, I'm supposed to serve the Lord, but the Lord's already told him what's going to happen. So when it came time, he didn't have to wonder, had he missed God? Had he left something undone? 
the Lord had already told him what was going to happen. Amen? He had that word, uh, he had that word of knowledge, or wisdom, the word of wisdom, way, way, way back, so that when that day came, he wasn't disturbed by, oh, I must have missed God to have gotten here. No, the Lord's already told you. You know, Jesus told, told Ananias about Saul. He said, I've shown him, I'll show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul wasn't caught off guard. He knew it was going to come. God told Abraham, get thee out of thy country, out of thy land, out of thy kindred, and go into a land that I will show thee. And, you know, and all, all of the gifts of the Spirit manifested in the Old Covenant except tongues and interpretation of tongues. That is distinctive to the New Covenant. You can prophesy about, I will speak to this people with Samuel this and another tongue will I speak to this people. Wherefore they will say, this is the refreshing wherewith the weary shall be refreshed. Or rest. Amen? And then 1 Corinthians tells us that, it refers to that chapter in Isaiah, saying this is, this is uh, with stammering lips and another tongue, I'll speak to this people. And it's the refreshing. And it was a new covenant, it was a new covenant, distinctive to that, and so it didn't manifest under the old covenant. All, all the other seven gifts did.